welcome to this week's episode of Weary Weekly History and Entertainment News. Massachusetts is currently experiencing a downward trend in COVID-19. So many businesses and arts and entertainment venues have begun to reopen, albeit with multiple restrictions. Unfortunately, new movies are not part of the equation for this week. So there will be an additional stop on the history portion of the show. First, it's time for this week's trivia question, which will be answered at the end of the show. This week's question is, what was Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts in North Adams, or MCLA, known as from 1894 until 1932? Now, for this week's local entertainment headlines. Massachusetts is now under Phase 3 of its reopening plan. Much like Phase 2, Phase 3 will consist of two steps, though Governor Charlie Baker and his administration are unsure of when Phase 3, Step 2, will occur. Phase 3, Step 1 will allow gyms, theater companies, movie theaters, and sporting events without fans to reopen slowly. It's important to note that bars and nightclubs will not be a part of this stage. Most places will have capacity limits and mandatory cleaning requirements. Both stages of Phase 3 are going to last longer than most of the other phases because Governor Baker promised the fourth and final stage of reopening won't begin until COVID-19 vaccinations or treatments begin. Visit mass.gov for more information about this reopening phase. As I've said on other WWATN episodes, just because businesses can be open doesn't mean that they are open. Please make sure to call these venues ahead of time to see what their regulations are or visit their websites. For instance, the Norman Rockwell Museum in Stockbridge, Mass Mocha in North Adams, and the Clark Art Museum in Williamstown are requiring patrons to purchase tickets in advance for specific time slots, either by phone or online. The Berkshire Theatre Group has been cleared to stage the popular musical Godspell. Godspell is the first performance in the United States to be approved by the Actors' Equity Association in the COVID-19 crisis. It will be staged under a large open-air tent in a parking lot adjacent to the Colonial Theater on South Street. In the Berkshire Theater Group's press release for Godspell, Caden McGuire, Berkshire Theater Group's CEO and Artistic Director said, quote, Godspell got the green light after establishing a strict protocol to protect the health and safety of the audience, the performers, and other involved in the show. We have been working daily and in the true spirit of care and collaboration with the Actors' Equity Association for the past several weeks. In an email conversation I had with Katie Watts, press manager for the Berkshire Theatre Group, she expressed her gratitude towards the Actors' Equity Association, saying in part, quote, In the time of deep uncertainty, I am so proud that Berkshire Theatre Group, in its 92nd season, will be authorized and granted the responsibility to produce the musical Godspell, a true tribute to the human spirit, End quote. According to the press release, Godspell is a timeless tale of friendship, loyalty, and love, where a group of eccentric disciples help Jesus teach a variety of parables through interactive games and a heaping dose of humor. Furthermore, quote, this theatrical sensation is a powerful reminder of community, love, and kindness that will live on, end quote. Many safety protocols will be taking place, and Watts stated, quote, Our staff has worked hand-in-hand -hand with the Actors' Equity Association to create a very safe, sanitized, 
an enjoyable experience for company members and patrons alike. These protocols include temperature scans for patrons at their point of entry, no contact scanning stations for tickets, freestanding hand sanitizer stations, one-way foot traffic patterns, and a doctor or nurse on site for all performances. Patrons must also follow social distancing guidelines and seats will be placed six feet apart. Tickets for Godspell cost $100, except for the August 6th preview, when tickets will be $75, and are currently available at the Berkshire Theatre Group's website, whose link is shown here. This is the only official website to purchase tickets for the Berkshire Theatre Group. You can also call BTG at 413-997-4444. Play is scheduled to run from August 7th through September 4th. Shakespeare and Company has been allowed a permit to offer drive-in movie theaters. The Lenox Zoning Board of Appeals voted unanimously to allow the theater company to show movies at Shakespeare's campus at 70 Kemble Street. They will be teaming up with the Berkshire International Film Festival to show a wide variety of films every Thursday through Sunday starting July 23rd. Although no specific films have been chosen, programming will include a variety of documentaries, narrative features, family films, and animated movies. Friday nights will be Shakespeare night, as the company plans to show a variety of different films based on the playwright's work. Tickets can be purchased at BIFFMA.org. Ticket holders will be admitted to the parking lot starting at 7 o'clock p.m. Each movie would run between 80 minutes to 2 hours, and all vehicles must leave Shakespeare and Company by 11 o'clock. Tickets cost $15 per person and $60 per carload of four or more patrons. Stay tuned to WWHEN to see which films the drive-in plans to show. In other Shakespeare and Company news, it was announced that the theater company is launching a springboard fundraising campaign to help furloughed employees. Shakespeare and Company's administrative offices are running on limited hours and operations, and many of the 26 full-time employees are furloughed. The managing director, Adam Davis, said, quote, Recently, we announced the springboard campaign to raise $500,000 to help address this year's earned revenue shortfall and place the company in the strongest position to reopen its facilities. Longtime friends of the company launched the campaign with a $50,000 matching gift to encourage others to support the company during these unprecedented times. We are incredibly heartened by the strong response so far to this critical fundraising drive, end quote. Shakespeare and Company is optimistic that fall programming, including the popular Fall Festival of Shakespeare and educational opportunities, will resume, presumably sometime in November. If you would like to help out Shakespeare and Company's springboard, you can call them at 413-637-1199, extension 180. It's now time for WWHEN's history portion. Our first stop this week is the Edith Wharton House in Lenox. The grounds to the house are currently open, and tours of the mount begin on July 16th. The Edith Wharton House is named after one of America's finest novelists. She is known for her stories about upper-class society and social change. Among her most famous novels include The Age of Innocence and Ethan Frome. She was the first woman awarded a Pulitzer Prize in fiction and the first woman to receive an honorary doctorate of letters from Yale University. Her connection to Berkshire County began in 1901. 
That year, eager to escape her home in Newport, Rhode Island, Wharton designed and built a 113-acre house in Lenox, Massachusetts, called The Mount. According to The Mount's website, this home met Wharton's, quote, needs as designer, gardener, hostess, and, above all, writer, end quote. The Wharton family only lived there 10 years, selling the property in 1911 when Edith and her husband divorced and she moved permanently to France. After the Wharton family left, private families owned the house until 1942. That year, the all-female school, Fox Hollow, purchased the Mount to use for some of their facilities. It remained that way until 1976, when the school closed. Fox Hollow sold it to Lenox, and the town turned it into an inn and the home of Shakespeare and Company's actors. Years of hard use and deferred maintenance left the place in dire straits until restoration began in 1997. Today, it is a popular spot for weddings and hosts one of the largest collections of Edith Wharton's works. Every year, except for 2020 due to COVID, there is also the Edith Wharton Writers in Residence program. In March, the Mount offers weekly retreats for three upcoming female writers. The responsibility of the writers are to spend time further developing their creative works. This program has been growing in popularity since the, its establishment in 2014. Our second history stop also provides the answer to this week's trivia question. As a reminder, the question was, what was Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts, or MCLA, known as from 1894 until 1932? The answer is North Adams Normal School. Normal schools were very common in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, as these were designed for upcoming teachers. Until 1932, MCLA was a women's only college. That year, it was renamed the State Teachers College of North Adams, where it offered a four-year program in education. This has remained one of the college's strengths throughout its time. It also gained its first president, Albert G. Eldridge, whose name adorns the administration building today. From 1932 to 1960, State Teachers College had two other presidents who had buildings eventually named after them. Grover C. Boldman, classroom focusing on computer sciences and art, and Eugene F. Friel, the library. 1960 was a major turning point for the college. It was renamed again as the North Adams State College. The college added many new degree programs, including liberal arts, business administration, computer science, and medical technology. North Adams State College's medical technology major was the first of its kind in the state of Massachusetts. Over the next 37 years, the college grew in popularity, but gained an unfortunate reputation as a party school. As a result, it struggled to gain respect in the academics. That changed in 1997. That year, the college began a new mission statement, focusing on, quote, excellence in learning and teaching, innovative scholarship, intellectual creativity, public service, applied knowledge, and active and responsible citizenship, end quote. The new focus led to yet another name change, the Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts, or MCLA for short. Taking an academic approach has done wonders for MCLA's reputation. Today, MCLA is now known for its strong academics in a small liberal arts college setting. There are more than 80 programs offered for undergraduates, as well as three graduate programs. For the past two years, MCLA has appeared on the US and World News Report's top 10 public schools reaching a peak of number seven last year. It is still growing as well. 
The school has added programs in communications and the health sciences, merging with Southern Vermont College when it closed in 2019. MCLA may have struggled to find its footing early on, but today it is one of the best public liberal arts schools in the country. That ends this week's episode of Weary Weekly History and Entertainment News. You can watch this week's episode on PCTV Channel 1301, CTSB TV Channel 1301, and NBCTC Channel 1301. Air times on all three of these networks vary. Visit the website shown here for more information. Thank you.